If you are as nerdy as I am, you like journaling prompts, and you like these exercises and these activities that have prompts in books that help you think about your life and figure out how to make the next year the best year of your life. So in this video, I thought I would share three journaling prompts that have been power questions for the year, and I think have really made me think and have made a really, really good year out of one that did not start very good. What's up you guys, Alex Hine. So before we jump into this video, make sure you check out the link right below for a free journaling worksheet that'll help you figure out how to get your life together and plan out how to have a really, really incredible year aligned with the kind of deliberate life you want. So that is right below this video. So let's talk about the very first prompt, which is when my life was going really well in that category, what was I doing? This is a really underrated question. And I began doing this little booklet, creating a booklet called the Doomsday Document about seven years ago. And the Doomsday Document is very simple. During the best phases of your life, you are probably doing different rituals than you are right now if things are not going as well. It's not guaranteed, right? Sometimes stuff happens to you in life and it derails you. But realistically, if I used to be super fit and I'm not anymore, I had personal actions I stopped doing. If I used to be in a great relationship and now it sucks, I stopped doing something or started doing something, right? If I was great with money and now I'm really struggling with it, I probably changed something about my daily rituals or daily habits. So revisiting that master of the day philosophy, what daily rituals and daily habits was I doing in that quadrant of my life that made it so good? So I have this doomsday document on my computer and it's broken down into the various quadrants of life, like finances, friendships, happiness, sleep even, whatever the recurring problems can be, I have a document there for them. And the only thing I write down in that document, let's say for example, sleep. I go back to this document when I'm not sleeping well, and I write down, these are the five things that are the biggest susceptibilities that make you sleep poorly. Or these five things in your financial life, if you start doing them daily, you're gonna start having a lot more money and a lot more savings again. So ask yourself, you know, the last time you were in a great relationship or the last time you had a lot of friends or the last time you felt really, really happy in life, what were you doing daily in terms of habits and rituals in your calendar? The second useful question I think is at the beginning of the year, many of us plan out goals and rituals and things like that, right? We have these bucket list things that we want to do in terms of I want to achieve this, but rarely do we put down what are the one to three experiences we want to have on that same bucket list that will make life meaningful. So at the beginning of each year, I come up with a few bucket list experiences that I want to have. They can be classic. I want to travel to Thailand and go, you know, on those catamarans between the islands, or it can be, I just want to get a raise and make $10,000 more. But in general, these should be experiences, right? For me personally, my number one expenditure after just daily living is travel because that is something I can always justify as being worthwhile and fulfilling in my life. So for me, I always come up with one to three bucket list experiences. So for the coming year, those experiences are maybe go to see the Northern Lights in Iceland, walk a little bit of the Camino in Spain for my birthday, and go to Croatia for a bachata and salsa festival, and get a boat to go island hopping and we'll be dancing on the boats. So those are my bucket list experiences for the year because I know that no matter how up or down this year goes, I'm gonna have three memorable experiences that I will always be able to remember. And the point of that is that you're really deliberately living ahead of time and not hoping that one day these experiences will happen. And the final power question for me is, what one to three achievements would make this year the best year ever? And I think this is so useful because it really makes goal setting around the new year more tangible, right? So last year I moved to Los Angeles, a new city alone, no friends. You know, I was starting my own private practice out here and I thought, well, if three things only happened this year, that would make it an incredible year. What would they be? And I wrote down, develop a close group of friends, start my private practice doing work that I love and alongside that work the number of hours I want to work. So if that's 20, then just work 20 hours a week. If that's 100, work 100 hours a week. And then the third thing I wrote down was having meaningful social experiences from Thursday to Sunday. So I often get caught up with work up until Friday and I wanted to make sure Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night, I always had a meaningful social experience, something to do. Ideally with friends or ideally with a girl I'm dating, but worst case scenario, 
just something that was social and meaningful and community oriented. So I knew ahead of time going into this year that if all I did was those three things, had a good friend group, I built my private practice and worked only as many hours as I wanted doing what I wanted to do, and then some kind of meaningful tribe or community on the weekend or meaningful experiences, that it would be a great year. And I would feel good internally and I would have the level of success and fulfillment I wanted. And I think that's more useful than the typical way we go about setting goals. Just thinking that what three things, if I achieve them this year, would make the year the best ever. It's a great frame going forward for the year. All right, guys, I think those are three very useful journaling prompts. Uh, I tend to do them at the beginning of every year and even at the beginning of every quarter of each year. And that helps me refocus every 100 days to make sure that I'm not drifting as time goes on. But if you want, that free journaling worksheet below this video has some similar prompts that can help you plan out what you're going to do this year, get your life together, and really get focused and get deliberate about what you want to have happen. All right, so check that out below. I'm curious though, before you leave, let me know down below what are the three experiences you wanna have. I'll uh, share more of my own if enough of you comment down there below. And then before you go, finally, two other videos here that can help you.